Hello, okay. everybody. Welcome to our midday session for the Second World Astrology Summit. Very excited to welcome Lynn Bell back. Lynn was, I think, probably the first or second mundane astrological talk that I ever attended. Um, and this was years ago. This would probably have been 2013, 2014. It was definitely some time ago. And it was uh, new to me at that time that astrology could be used for uh, the the um, you know the opportunity to take a look at what's happening in the world. So I'm really uh, lucky to be able to welcome Lynn to speak about uh, France and what's going on. We've got a lot coming up ahead for um, for France with the Olympics this summer and the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, plus what's going on with Saturn and Pluto. So Lynn, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you and just say thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you, Wade, uh, for inviting me. You've you've brought together an incredible group of people, and I'm really happy to be part of them here. So I um, already spoke on France in uh, the fall for you. And um, mm -hmm. what I found interesting is some things uh, I might be repeating, so just bear with me. Um, so I called this calling in the gods. And one of the reasons I did that, of course, is that whenever a country hosts the Olympics, I suppose whenever we're evoking astrology, we're calling in the gods. But when a country hosts the Olympics, it's calling in the presence of something uh, beyond the ordinary. And that can be problematic or not. Um, the Olympics were restarted in 1896 with the Jupiter with the Neptune-Pluto conjunction in Gemini. And as it so happens, Jupiter will be back in, in Gemini uh, for the Olympics this year. Uh, but of course, the possibility for all kinds of things, uh, all kinds of things can happen. I love this image because it's visited, it's the gods visited by Psyche. So I hope we're all trying to do that this weekend. Now, um, I'm going to start with the Aries ingress uh, for Paris um, because um, I've been looking at that technique. And um, <laughs> what, what, what's striking here, if you, you some of you have already seen this chart, is the presence of Uranus at, at the bottom of the chart and uh, the IC over here being on, um, paired by the Jupiter Uranus on either side of it. Um, and Uranus being the closest to the angle, about a, a degree uh, away uh, from the fourth house cusp. So that certainly indicates a sense of a possibility of excitement and a possibility of some insecurity as well. And the issue of security being huge, given this pileup of planets, which, which I imagine happens for many uh, capitals uh, for the Aries ingress, of Venus, Saturn, Neptune, Sun, North Node, Mercury, and Chiron, all in the second house, and in um, the moon opposition Pluto. So we can, the, the combination of moon opposition Pluto and um, uh, the Jupiter-Uranus on the angle of the basis indicates a sort of split in the psyche of the country. On the one hand, there's this wonderful sun trine moon, uh, the, the moon and Leo welcoming the world, you could say, welcoming others in. And the other, there's this Pluto opposition. In, and true to form with this chart, um, the France just announced that um, uh, it had expected inflation to be at 4.9% this year, and it's running at 5.5, which is still better uh, than uh, quite a few other countries, but um, uh, ringing many alarm bells and um, a number of rather uh, uh, scary belt tightening solutions have just been proposed by the French government, which of course you can all see in this second house again, and particularly uh, the Venus-Saturn conjunction. Right. Um, one, I just want to back up a little bit because uh, many of you saw images earlier this year, and I, ta I talked about this uh, recently on a Uranus and Taurus uh, talk, but 
uh, Paris was actually at the end of January surrounded by tractors <laughs> and um, uh, the farmers unions, the uh, different agricultural unions were uh, more or less blockading or threatening to blockade uh, cities uh, throughout France. And in France, the more extreme people actually wanted to block um, uh, the central food distribution uh, uh, storehouse in Rangis, uh, which is just outside of Paris, um, about, uh, about 40 minutes away from Paris. And, and actually the farmers were threatening to blockade. Um, this was in response to a number of things. Most importantly, the end of subsidies for diesel fuel. In other words, whenever the government makes a movement in the direction of an ecological ideal, which could be seen as Uranus and Taurus, um, whenever that ecological ideal is proposed towards ecology, there's um, almost a kind of rumbling from the people that actually have to deal with the earth. Um, and uh, here they're writing, our uh, notre fin sera votre fin, our end will be your hunger. And so they were actually, the, the most extreme people were actually threatening to block food delivery to the capital. And uh, so you you one of the things you need to know about the French is they have a very um maybe a very particular temperament, which is an outgrowth of the French Revolution, which of course happened with Pluto and Aquarius. And it isn't exactly um all members of society don't believe they should cooperate with each other. It's just, it's not exactly the same model as, I mean, right now many countries are like that, but um, uh, there's a very strong element of, uh, and right to speak out, to manifest, to say what needs to be said. Um, so there's only so far that the top, the country, the leadership of the country, you could say, can go in any direction without creating a very, very strong reaction. And that's particularly true at the moment. Uh, France is very resonant with the Uranus, um, the Jupiter-Uranus cycle, as we'll see a little later. So um, this is in French, um, and I will, uh, I'll run through it with you. This was uh, from a few days ago. It's uh, one of the major research organizations asking French what matters to them. And of course, number one, which probably would be true in the US, 51% say the difficulty in, in anything that touches the pocketbook, the power of the pocketbook, uh, rise in prices, uh, salaries not high enough, uh, higher taxes, etc. Only second is the future of the security, the social security system, meaning retirement and health. Third, immigration. And tied with that at 30%, of course, people shared these. You can, this isn't divided. It's not, it wasn't like an either or. And um, at exactly the same percentage, 30%, the current international crisis of Ukraine and uh, Israel and Gaza. And then we go down um, to, uh, it's a little bit more mixed, very close is delinquents and environmental issues, okay, ecology and environment. Um, so one of the things that's going on is, as you can see from the preceding picture, there's a big crisis in values where maybe almost 30% of the country thinks ecology is the most important thing, but more than that, they think the power of the pocketbook is more important and what will we sacrifice if that happens? Uh, social inequality and terrorism are also in this list. All right. Um, <clears throat> we have a new, um, I'll, I actually meant to change this. Uh, the prime minister, who is the youngest prime minister in French history, who is not this politician at the bottom, that's a rival politician who's even younger. Um, uh, Gabriel Attal, the French 
Prime Minister announced a series of possible measures, uh, ta huge tax, windfall taxes on the energy companies, taxes on buybacks, freeze of the income tax scale, an increase, a revision of unemployment policy and reimbursement for medicine and health. Uh, so uh, less unemployment and tightening. That was actually the finance minister said the other day, oh, well, what we pay for to reimburse um, medicine drugs at the pharmacy, it shouldn't be just like an open bar where anybody can order whatever they want. Um, and uh, uh, there was a lot of reaction to that statement. So, um, OK, let's talk about before we go more deeply into that issue, let's talk about the Olympics and this whole idea of something rushing through because everything changes when a country has the Olympics. It's very, very fraught. Uh, the government just announced that the opening ceremonies, which were supposed to have room for 600,000 people, now have 300,000 because of security issues. Um, here is the chart of the opening of the Olympics, um, which will happen on July 6, 2024. And um, again, one of the one of the things I feel up looking at this chart, uh, because security is such a big risk, what one of the things that made me feel good was this Mars, Uranus opposition was separating and that Mars was in Gemini and Uranus was in Taurus and they were about eight degrees apart. And I know that Mars is moving almost on the midpoint of Jupiter and Uranus here. It's moving to the conjunction with Jupiter, uh, but Mars-Jupiter feels much more like a crowd gathering together, exhilarating, uh, joyous, and celebratory than um, Mars moving to Uranus would under current circumstances. Uh, the French security forces, uh, now, however, we do have Mars square Mercury, but again, um, and that aspect is not separating. Uh, we can imagine that games are ruled generally by Mercury. Um, and I believe they were always dedicated in part to Hermes in the ancient days. And uh, in part to other individual gods, depending on the sport um, or the place they were held. Uh, so this is a very exciting chart for the opening with Mars and Jupiter in the fifth house of competition and a moon in Aries. And again, I felt some relief in this chart, uh, although I think there is a possibility in France for um, unexpected events before we get to the Olympics. Okay. I, I don't want to go too fast here, and I don't. All right, so this is the poster, uh, the official poster uh, for the Olympic Games. And um, I don't know what you think about this, but a lot of the French have said it looks like um, it's an illustrator named Hugo. Now oh, I'm going to forget his name. I should have written it down. Uh, but who said they said he spent 2000 hours working on the details of this particular uh, image. And that if you if you enlarge it, you'll see all kinds of things. And um, uh, some people said it looked like a pro uh, poster for an amusement park. It, it, again, one of the things you have to understand is that the French, who in the chart of the First Republic are Virgo son, um, immediately find what's wrong with any given thing. And the the artist said, he said, well, it doesn't represent reality. The Eiffel Tower is red and there's a wave from Tahiti uh, offshore. Um, as well as the Olympics going on in the Seine, and there's all kinds of details. It's not meant to be representative of reality. But the very first, so some people criticized it because of its um, aesthetic. Um, and you can buy a poster for 28 euros if you want. Uh, 
But the big controversy was this. One of the main things that was posted in the uh, French Olympic chart uh, <laughs> poster was the Invalide, which is the tomb of Napoleon, um, the Hotel de Invalide, uh, uh, which was built for the wounded of the Revolutionary Wars, of the Napoleonic Wars. And you'll notice that in the poster version, it's just a simple flesh, but in reality, there's a cross on top. So what immediately happened, because we live in a world of controversy and drama and conspirational theory, is that uh, there, this was an attempt to erase the true nature of France. So the right wing went literally insane because Christianity was being erased from France and there was no French flag on the poster. I'll show you that again. Like they said, where's France? <laughs> like, um, and of course there's the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe and the Seine and the Grand Palais and the Hotel d'Invalide. But they said, and many other familiar sites, if you're French, that you will, in, or you know Paris, you will immediately recognize. But this removal of one, this elimination of one detail, the cross on top of a building, and the Olympic flag and not the French flag, was considered actually a, a a plan, as if it were a plan to erase something fundamental in French identity. So um, I'll go back to this slide in a moment. So this erasure of identity is probably the biggest theme uh, that I want to talk to you about today in terms of transits to the French chart. And again, um, where is it? <laughs> I've got these in the wrong order. Okay, let me tell you uh, why I'm saying that. In the chart of the First Republic, which should be right there. Hold on. There it is. We're just going to do it this way. In the chart of the First Republic, which was the moment where basically the king's head was chopped out, which, off, which is the chart I like to use for France, the sun is at 29 degrees, 16 minutes of Virgo. And when the Olympics open, Neptune will be at 29 degrees, 46 minutes of Pisces. So France is having a major Neptune transit. Um, the chart of the founding of the modern French Republic is having a major Neptune transit. Uh, and this anxiety about who we are, are we losing our identity, is part of the dialogue, of course, in many countries in the world around immigration. Um, but it happens to be very powerful at this time with a split between uh, the right wing nativist parties who want a reaffirmation of French identity and uh, the traditional, uh, the centrist parties, which are pro-European, uh, and the socialist parties, which are sort of a mix of both. Um, uh, some of them are the more left-wing parties, which are more for the worker and don't care about, consider Europe a boondoggle for the working class, and other. So there is a huge... Um, as you can see, one of the main things going on in France at the moment from looking at this horoscope is that there is a very powerful mm, wipeout or washout. Okay, I have to now do this. Uh, there's a Neptunian wave uh, coming through. Uh, a big, a big wave coming through in terms of identity. So the very first crises um, is, in fact, um, oh, there it was there, in the First Republic chart. I don't know what's. I'm trying to go backwards. I'm sorry, and I wanted to go back to that. The very first crises was this that somehow people believe this was not French enough. 
Um, and you're meeting, you're having the international community come in. So the whole idea of Frenchness is a big subject. Another huge controversy that just happened a very short time ago is that a, um, a singer uh, whose name is, uh, she's a very, very famous African French singer whose first name is Aya. She has probably a billion viewers worldwide. And she sings in a combination of French and Argo and Malian and uh, Afrobeat and French suburbs. And apparently Macron had a conversation with her and asked if she wanted to sing at the opening of the Olympics. And again, the right wing went insane, um, not because she's black, but because she sings songs in a language which is not really French, not really, any, but interspersed with French, very creative mix of slang and several different languages that people might speak in a particular neighborhood. Um, but she's extremely popular, maybe the most popular French performer in the world today. So again, immediately, what is supposed to unite, because the whole idea of the Olympics, the whole idea of a sporting championship, the moment of coming together as a group is about some form of union. Um, this was um, <clears throat> something I read recently. I was reading a tiny volume of Johann von Goethe's Letters from Italy. And he was talking about the first time he saw an ancient arena. Uh, and this was in v Verona. And he imagined it. He said he imagined this structure, like what happens when people crowd together to see something and there's no space that's been devoted to that. And he says, crowded together, its members are astonished at themselves. They are accustomed at other times to seeing each other run hither and thither in confusion, bustling about without order or discipline. Now this many-headed, many-minded, fickle, blundering monster suddenly sees itself united as one noble assembly, welded into one mass, a single body animated by a single spirit. Now this is the goal, you could say, of the Olympics. Any event of this kind that gathers people together, especially in the round kind of arena space uh, that the Romans first built. Uh, this, and we could see this as a wonderful description of uh, Aquarian energy, um, rather than in the group consciousness coming together. And we can also see it as the Neptunian experience. We become one mass, a single body, a noble assembly animated by a single spirit. So we can see that the goal of the Neptune transit is to have this very, um, powerful, very elated, um, to shift the consciousness, uh, not just of the people who come, but of the entire country. And at the same time, as with any Neptune transit, and we'll go back to that, as with any Neptune transit, the danger is rather that there is a loss or a weakening of identity or confusion or a vulnerability to be taken over, uh, uh, to, to be subject to a contagion, whether that contagion is a contagion of a particular emotion, a particular belief. Um, and uh, the French pride themselves on their ability to logically analyze and on the what emerged from the encyclopedias before the French Revolution, the entire 18th century the, was called the age of reason, uh, the time of the encyclopedias. People questioned everything, they questioned the dictates of the church. And you see this in the First Republic chart because we have a south node in Pisces, which is the sign of faith. 
and a North Node in Virgo, uh, the sign of the analytical mind, and the North Node conjunct the Sun uh, and Mercury as this power of the mind, and yet at the moment, the power of the mind to question, the power of discourse, the power of ideas. And at the moment, of course, there's a very powerful challenge from Neptune to this. And we can also see in the outer circle here, where we see the node of the moon, which we know is going backwards, that very, very soon the nodal axis and the eclipses will also be activating um, the sun in this chart. All right, now I'll go backwards uh, because I meant to put that, uh, that. So after the Olympics, uh, the next huge event in France is the European elections. And this is the chart for the morning of the European elections in Paris. There are some elections that happen earlier in um, uh, what's called the Dome Tome, uh, for example, in Martinique and Guadeloupe uh, and other French possessions uh, in different time zones. But uh, the polls will open at 8 a.m. Now, this uh, also, this these elections are very much considered to be a test for the 2027 French presidential elections. Macron, who is the current president, president, cannot run again. He has, there is now a two-year term limit to the presidency. And so the presidency is up for grabs and people are starting, it's as if people are starting to line up on both the right, the left and center to see who might be viable uh, for this future uh, presidential race. So, not only that, the European elections generally are seen as a test for the power of all the far, far right groups in Europe. And uh, here, uh, this is the a quote from the site, uh, the link is on the bottom. In France, the far right uh, Rassemblement National is forecasted to receive up to 28.5% of the vote in the June European elections. If realized, this result would be the party's best electoral outcome in a European election ever. Okay, now, just so you know what this party is, it began as the Front National, uh, run by Jean-Marie Le Pen. His daughter, Marine Le Pen, uh, uh, he retired or essentially it was time for him to go and his daughter became the heir apparent. She's been a candidate in the last two presidential elections uh, in the runoffs. Uh, and of course, it's vying for a third party. Now, the this what you see, what is extremely powerful in the chart of the moment here is Mars square Pluto, uh, which in fixed signs, which indicates a very, um, um, perhaps a much uh, tougher campaign, a much uh, more hard edged campaign uh, than one might usually ex expect for Europe. Uh, one of the reasons that Marine Le Pen, um, that the Rassemblement, her party is expected to win, um, and it's really important to understand that her party is anti-Europe, anti-support for Ukraine. Um, uh, her previous campaign was partially financed by Russian banks because other banks wouldn't give her loans which doesn't mean that Marine Le Pen is like, she's, she's her own person. Uh, uh, she is, I don't want to impute something to her that's not true, uh, but there are these suspicions um, as you'll see in a quote I have later. All right, um, now a really important thing in France, which is very, very different than American politics, is the age of the people 
who hold the political center. And I wanted to make a list here of um, when people were, who, these names are not gonna mean anything to you, uh, but they, they probably will mean something to you. And because France has a wonderful data collector named Didier Gisellin, um, and data is open to the public, many of these charts are public information. So Marine Le Pen's lieutenant and the president, current president of her party is a young man named Jordan Bardella. He was born in 1995, and he is right now, uh, he has a really high popularity rating. That means 38% French people think he would be a great candidate for president. And Marine Le Pen has a 39% approval rating, um, and they're on the same team. Now, Jordan Bardella will be leading her list in the European elections. And he's uh, he was the second youngest person elected to the European Parliament at the age of 23. And we'll be looking at his chart in a minute. But even if, so Marine Le Pen was born in the 60s, 1968, the year of the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, although she doesn't have the conjunction, she has them in the same sign. Um, but you will notice that almost everybody here with one exception, uh, well, there's one old guy left from 1959, but people are born in 77, 70, 89, 75, 73, 89, 79. Um, these are people who are up and coming in French politics. Um, right. And we're going to look at, um, we already did this. So here is Emmanuel Macron, who is the current president of France. And the thing that's most important to see in his chart right now is the sun and Mercury at 29 degrees of Sagittarius. His popularity rating right now is 20%. Um, and the popularity of his government is about 22%. So in the most recent ratings. And basically, the French have hated all of the people who run their country in the last some year. <laughs> as soon as they're in power, they... And actually, the new prime minister who's been in power since January, they already are starting to not like him. So there's an immediate... Uh, as you can see, his chart squares the sun of that first republic chart, which in and of itself with the north node conjunct, the, the head of the devouring demon conjunct the sun, is not a great chart for any ruler. It doesn't bode well for whoever is going to become the head of state. Um, you have, uh, you, so you have a very... D difficult time here. Macron has a, uh, s luckily for him, he has Saturn in an outer sign trine to Sun and Mercury. So there's a certain solidity there. And um, maybe things will get better. Um, and Pluto, of course, is still going back and forth over his ascendant. So his chart fits right into the Neptune pattern, where he seems to be he seems to be oblivious to the fact that people don't want, they don't want to get high with him, really. That's one of the things that you could say about what's going on in France. Uh, this is in French, and uh, uh, again, it's linked to the Olympics. I don't know how my slides got out of order, but um, I'm just going to tell you a few things here is that because of the Olympics, like any country uh, that has had them, a huge amount of engineering, chantier, people. I was with a friend last night uh, who has some vision problems, and she said, everywhere I walk in France, sidewalks are ripped up. There's something going on everywhere. And indeed, uh, there's a huge amount of work going on. But one of the, um, at the end of June, like really one month before the Olympics, uh, a new a, a metro line will be prolonged out to Orly Airport and twice as many trains will be running on it. A year ago, they thought it might not happen and the government 
like put pressure on the engineering firm to speed up production. They opened a new factory. And in fact, this is happening. So there are these, this, there's a vision here, which is also part of Neptune, which will be realized uh, and is being realized in France. Okay, here's the chart of this very popular, uh, fresh traced popular a politician who also happens to be uh, married to uh, Marine Le Pen's niece. <laughs> so he's his mother-in-law is her sister. So it's all in the family. And he is um, uh, Jordan Bardella, born in 1995, is uh, not yet 28. He's 27 years old right now. Uh, and people are already talking about him as someone with presidential fiber. So Jordan Bardella has the sun at 20 degrees of Virgo, Trine, and Venus at 26. So you can see he's picking up that first Republic chart. Trine, uh, uh, Neptune, and Uranus. He carries the conjunction in his chart. And a little bit wide to be a ground trine is the moon at 13 degrees of Taurus. So this very, very solid earth energy. Um, Bardella is the son of immigrants, uh, Italian immigrants. He grew up in an, uh, public housing. Uh, his mother's grandmother uh, was Algerian. So he's of mixed ethnic background. And he is uh, a very well-spoken, uh, very solid, uh, very uh, good speaker who um, uh, you know, basically when he's confronted with the fact that he has the lowest attendance of every, uh, of any European MP, I mean, he almost never goes to the European Parliament and uh, he's been present on a very small number of votes. He says, well, no, it's not that I'm against Europe. It's that I am for France first and then for Europe. And he um, is saying that French values should be the most important, that French identity is the most important. But again, he comes from a social background that is, it's very different than Jean-Marie Le Pen, the founder of the party who was openly anti-Semitic and anti-racist. Uh, it's a very, very different face of a party that is saying, we need to um, create different boundaries. Um, it is, um, it, it's, and it's possible, this party which was considered anathema is becoming more and more respectable. And they also have alliances with people all over. Now, uh, Bardella also has a classic conservative signature, which is the Saturn uh, opposing his son and Venus um, and uh, Saturn probably trying Pluto. I think uh, we could throw that in the mix. And you'll notice that Saturn is on the south node of, um, of the French chart as well. And I find... Uh, this interesting because we know that in this period, um, he hasn't even had his first Saturn return where we are in a period of flux with Saturn and Pisces. Um, there is a very strong temptation to try and to be attracted to something solid. We saw that chart of the ingress with the very strong second house and the Uranus in the fourth house. So the issue of safety and security being really strongly activated in the psyche of the country in this, for this coming period. And this idea of what are our values? Who are our values? And in that chart, we also saw a Venus-Saturn conjunction. So you will notice in Bardella's chart, we have Venus opposition Saturn. Um, and uh, you can, so again, this whole temptation to go to something that doesn't feel mm, uncomfortable and scary. Um, 
All right. Let's now opposed to uh, you could say the other youth figure. And again, this couldn't be more different than the octogenarians, septuagenarian, octogenarian combat in the United States right now. Uh, we have the new prime minister born the 16th of March, 1989. Now I put his chart in my PowerPoint last September because he was the minister of education and he was um, quite feisty um, and one of the things you will notice with his chart is um, the Jupiter-Mars conjunction in Gemini. So even though he's very recently, he's France's youngest prime minister, and he's, uh, again, an excellent communicator, as you could imagine, with Mars, Jupiter, square, and Gemini, uh, square to Mercury and square the node, uh, he... Uh, it, it, and actually, there was a recent article in Le Monde saying he's always checking. He goes on TV and then he checks his phone and says, oh, we've gotten a good response to what I said yesterday. He's almost in a he's he believes in this constant contact and communication and relationship with um, uh, the public uh, as a tactic. Uh, he's also a Neptune year. Uranus, although he's much more a Saturn Neptune person, and we'll notice that this Saturn Neptune conjunction um, is coming back uh, in 2026. So we'll be, um, I'm, he'll certainly, he'll probably be around for a while, given the way he resonates with the cycles um, in the coming years. Um, the chart of the Olympics, of course, uh, Jupiter and Mars will be conjunct in Gemini. Uh, so this will, will probably be quite positive for him. Um, you will notice that you might remember that Macron, the prime minister, has an ascendant at 28 degrees of Capricorn, uh, uh, 29 degrees of Capricorn, and Natal is at 28 degrees of Cancer. So you have this, uh, and in, initially, uh, many commentators were saying he's just Macron's puppet. So I think he's uh, very intent on fighting his way out of this. But notice the degree of his son. Um, I'll see if I can go back to Bardella. Bardella has Saturn at 25 Pisces. And, uh, oh, sorry, 21 Pisces, 25. Uh, that's on a very tight opposition to his son. And uh, here we have uh, Gabriel Atal with his son at 25 uh, degrees of Pisces. And Atal is also interesting in his background. His parents divorced. His father was... Jewish and his mother was Christian Orthodox. So he's also raised in a kind of question of what do we really believe, right? And um, it's noteworthy that he became prime minister essentially on a Neptune transit. Um, and this is not uncommon in France that people are lifted up. Uh, the chart of the Fifth Republic has a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Um, as does the, okay. So, um, and this is an example of a kind of dialogue going, going on that what Atal is doing. A few weeks earlier, in response to the address of the far-right leader, Marine Le Pen, who shouted after Emmanuel Macron's February 26 remarks, not really not sending troops to Ukraine to fight against the Russian invasion, Gabriel Attal asserts, there is reason to wonder if Vladimir Putin's troops are not already in our country. I am talking about you and your troops, Mrs. Le Pen. So this was a one-on-one -on -one exchange at the National Assembly. And um, those who are advising him say, he's coming from this point of view, if you don't make moves, you don't exist. So we have a very active, very combative, um, um, environment in France at the moment with the same sort of confusion and uh, doubt about 
what's going on that is happening in many countries in the world due to disinformation um, and uh, uh, disinformation, whether intentional or un just wildfire social media or intentionally spread by bots. Um, I used this in my last talk and um, just to remind you that the uh, Bastille fell uh, with a conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus, and this is an extremely important conjunction in France, that it is um, uh, Jupiter and Uranus, Uranus were conjunct during the May 1968 events, which changed France completely. And um, one of the uh, so one of the, the, the power of the unexpected, the power of freedom, um, I was showing you uh, earlier um, the list of politicians and their ages. And one of the parties is called France Insoumise, which basically translates like um, those who will never give in. Uh, the French rebels. It's like, you know, so you can imagine in another country having a party called the Rebel Party um, as a, a major party. And what it, what happened, I talked about this last time, is that when Macron was elected, he blew out the old divisions between right and left. And Macron, as he's, his rule has continued, he showed more and more his sympathies with liberal activity economic policy, sort of the open free market policy that characterizes the US or Britain and the socialist um, structure of society. But he's going more and more in that direction. And at the moment, the cabinet is much more right wing than it's going more to the right than to the left. But the left in France is fragmented. And the charts I showed you of people are also fragmented. There's no clear leader on the left, whereas the, the personalities on the right have a very strong following. Um, if we go back um, to Bardella, you will notice that he's been benefiting from a very powerful Jupiter transit to his moon, and that the upcoming Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will trine his sun trine Neptune uh, structure. Uh, so again, this is um, that there's a lot of wind in his sails at the moment uh, for a possible uh, for a positive outcome a little later. Uh, and in Natal's chart, uh, the Uranus Jupiter conjunction sextiles, his Venus moon trine. Um, so it's not it's not cut and dried. There are really strong um, positive um, signatures in both of these charts. Um, now here's um, a chart I was putting in at the last minute because I was sure it was it here and it wasn't. It's the chart of this year's Jupiter Uranus conjunction this time set for France, and I have to move this in order to see it. Right. Okay. And here again, you have a similar emphasis on values. I mean, this chart will be the same for all over the world, but what's really notable and really striking for me about this chart is that moon at 29 degrees of Virgo, exactly on the sun of the First Republic uh, chart square the son of Emmanuel Macron with not just Neptune opposing, but Mars also in the mix and Mars and Saturn both in the mix. And this, this feels potentially dangerous. And we know that um, after the uh, terrorist attack in Moscow last week um, at uh, a concert, uh, that left uh, many people dead, uh, that uh, most people attribute to Islamic, uh, Islamic extremism. 
uh, France is on, a, on its highest alert. They plan to have uh, 45,000 police or security, military, a combination of security forces in the streets during the Olympics. I mean, they're, not, they're and the French government announced that it had already um, foiled two terrorist attacks since the beginning of the year. So I could, um, I could imagine uh, that there is um, perhaps not at the exact moment of the conjunction, but in the 10 days following, there could be something, I'm looking at the Mars uh, in particular, there could be something uh, very, uh, I'm progressing that Mars, uh, there could be something uh, shocking or devastating in France. I do believe that there is a strong possibility of, of an event uh, before the Olympics, but um, something that if hell have been um, discovered and repaired and resolved beforehand. And that uh, could also change something. Uh, there are other ways this could work out. The French, one of the French unions has announced that in April, it will um, give notice that it can go on strike at any time between June and the end of the Olympics uh, at the end of September. So it's a very, um, uh, so, so, I, you know, this, and again, this is like most, most countries are, let's pull together, we're having the Olympics. The French are not like that. It's like, what a great opportunity to get whatever it is we want. And um, I believe that, um, uh, this could also be this kind of disruption, but it feels very uh, Mars at the midpoint of Saturn and Neptune here. And we're, again, this is the, evoking this upcoming conjunction as the two planets get closer. Um, we're seeing that um, combination of energies uh, does feel like a very strong someone acting out of a very strong belief, an absolute belief and um, ready to uh, sacrifice anything in service of that belief. And, um, and then again, it could be popular anger at uh, the loss of economic power. Uh, although the planets here in the second house seem to be a bit more favorable uh, in within the next um, hour or so, with the next hour or so, within the next month or so. Okay. Um, I'm back to the ch chart of the First Republic. That's what you were supposed to see earlier in the presentation. So again, a reminder of those degrees. Now, the other thing I want you to see here, and this I talked about last time, is that there is in this chart, which is the chart where the king was beheaded, Mars is at 25 degrees of Scorpio, Pluto is at 21 degrees of Aquarius, and Uranus is at 21 degrees of Leo. So the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction that we just saw interfaces not only does the moon uh, uh, conjunct the sun of this chart, it interfaces very powerfully with this chart. So there is a, um, a, it's been kind of quiet in Paris and maybe that's compared to other years where we've had strike, continual strikes and demonstration, maybe because it's been raining all the time. Um, but, um, you will also notice in this chart that there's a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. And this is also in the chart of the current French government, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Um, I was mentioning that earlier in terms of someone else's chart, okay? Which I can't remember right now. Um, last week, uh, 
there was an incident in France of uh, at a school called Maurice Revel, which is a few metro stops from where I live in the 20th arrondissement. And um, uh, the incident, uh, this is a picture taken in front of the school. The incident was that a young student who, who is already over 18 um, and studying for, uh, she's trying to make up her uh, high school degree, which she didn't finish. Uh, so she's studying for a technical degree. She came to school uh, with two other students with veils on. Now, French, the French have passed a, a law, which is controversial in some, uh, for some people, that very obviously rigid, religious symbolism is forbidden in public spaces, whether that's a, a, a kippah, a large Christian cross, or a veil, uh, or even an abaya, um, a tunic. Uh, none of these are allowed, uh, and particularly in school. And the head of the school, uh, who had been working there for many years, came to see the three students and two of them took their veils off and one of them refused. And afterwards she complained that he struck her, that he was violent with her and had hit her. And she went to the police and filed a complaint. And um, in fact, the police investigated, they interviewed people who were present and they found that there was no, uh, that it was complete, there was no basis to this. And in fact, uh, the prime minister, Gabriel Attal, has just decided, announced on television on Wednesday that the state was going to actually prosecute her from denunciation columnus, which means, um, you know, a scandalous, an attack on someone's, a false attack uh, on someone else's reputation. And what happened is this uh, um, school director was then subject to death threats and attacks. And because there have been two, two teachers killed by Islamic terrorists since 2019, uh, one in 2019, Samuel Paddy, who was beheaded, another who was stabbed to death last fall. Uh, this, the, this is being taken extremely seriously. And this, um, 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 a few weeks before that, uh, some police uh, stopped a car and there was an accident and a young man died. And a group of youths actually attacked a police station and fired um, very large fireworks. They attacked it with um, uh, the, a massive attack, set it on fire, uh, shot things at it. So there is still a highly volatile situation in France, especially with these transits that anything can happen here. Okay, um, I'll skip that. Um, now, I don't really know this person, but my uh, advisor, when I talk speak on French politics, is my partner Gilles, who is um, uh, who reads a lot, and he mentioned this woman to me, and her chart sort of jumped out at me. She's in the extreme uh, left party. She was initially a communist. Uh, she's born in 1973, so a little older than some of the people we've been looking at. Um, but uh, she's extremely well-spoken, extremely clear. And what you see here, of course, is a grand air trine. And because the outer planets are, uh, are all changing signs from earth and water to air and fire, it made me think um, that we're going to be hearing more from this woman. There's, um, she has uh, had a, has a public feud with the head of the party that she's now associated with, the the rebel party, and the head of this party is a is a, a, a guy named Jean Luc Mélenchon who who refused to join a march uh, supporting anti semitism earlier in the fall. Uh, and his party has refused to condemn uh, the, the attack of Hamas on Israel. Uh, and um, 
they people have said in analyzing what he's doing, he was a candidate in the last presidentials and got 21%. And he's the last one of the old guard born in 1951. And he promised to step down, but he hasn't quite stepped down. And so she's been challenging him saying, so wait, um, why, why don't we know how you're choosing your slate for the European elections? And you'll notice she has a moon Mars conjunction. Uh, but she has a grand trine, Clementine Autant, in uh, air signs, and her chart will, her midheaven uh, is in early Sagittarius, and her chart will be activated by Jupiter this year and by Uranus in a few years, I believe, for the 2027 elections. And um, I think that you're going to be hearing more of her. Uh, Pluto is right now trining her, uh, coming up to her ascendant, trining her Pluto, and will soon trine her sun. So this is probably, um, I, I got kind of excited when I saw her chart, and I thought um, maybe we actually have someone who can become a voice for, a, a new voice for one of the wings of political thought in France, as I looked at this. All right. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about her is that she, uh, um, although she she comes from a kind of more fortunate background than the young man we saw, you can see she also has, like Gabrielle Attal, Mars square Mercury. Uh, Mars, so this this very combative period in French politics. Um, and she's known for two things in her personal story, although she doesn't talk about it much. She revealed some years ago that she had been um, raped on campus when she was going to college at the age of 22 and became a very strong feminist as a result of that. And she was also the daughter of an actress who died um, probably of suicide uh, when she was 12 years old. Um, and so she is uh, someone who has overcome um, uh, a lot of adversity and has a very strong position on the women's place in society and women's voice. And you will notice she has a Venus Saturn conjunction. Trine Jupiter, trine Uranus. Uh, so now here's the chart of the Fifth Republic, which is the actual current government. And one of the things that Marine Le Pen and Jordan Bardella want to do is get rid of this chart. Actually, sorry, they don't. It's um, the rebels. They want a Sixth Republic where there's no executive, but committees deciding everything, like in the revolutionary days. So um, we have a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Scorpio, and um, but this chart too, even though I think this chart is less resonant with certain events, um, you know, I don't think of France as a, like a super harmonious uh, political entity where everybody listens to each other, uh, especially recently. Uh, but you'll notice that the moon in this chart at 28 degrees of Gemini is also being transited by Neptune right now. So the whole idea, um, one of the things I would say about France is France doesn't know who it is right now or where it wants to go. Now, Wade, um, I want to ask you, do I, uh, should I look at my questions now? I notice there's a lot of stuff going on in the chat box. Yeah, there's a lot in the chat um, and we can, okay. Take a look to see if I think they're mostly commentary, Lynn. But um... uh, yeah, uh, that's okay. I'd like to kind of open it up a little bit. Uh, quite young, yeah. That that is really this idea that the whole new generation is central in the political um, in the political dialogue right now. Even people in their fifties, <laughs> you know, like uh, people in their twenties, thirties. Uh, uh, the Uranus-Neptune generation already uh, jumping up. And I see, Wade, that you've commented that this, uh, the youth of this of the people involved 
Um, <clears throat> and I can really feel, uh, Yang Yi said she's curious about age demographics and percentages of the voters. Um, you know the, the, the slide I showed you about what French people uh, were concerned by? Uh, there's actually also the percentage in, in that site, if you click there, <clears throat> you will also find uh, per, uh, demographics and uh, what percentage of the population is what age. And basically, almost every age tranche of uh, age group has a similar number of people. There's not a huge bias. There's more older people, but there's about... 4 million in most of the voting age groups, 3 million plus to 4 million in almost every major voting group. Um, and this constant contact, um, as Wade says, with the moon sun trine and the Mars Jupiter conjunction, uh, you were talking about a tal's chart, I think. Um, and uh, Lena says Bartha, Bardella was so earthy, the guy has no, this guy has no earth, both have sun Venus conjunction signifying their youth or maybe their charm. Um, <clears throat> yes, mostly comments. So one, one of the things here is how many of you would want to come, um, uh, how many of you would want to come to France for the Olympics? How many of you are feeling excited about that? Uh, I'm, that's one of the questions I would ask living here. I mean, I might be in the country, I don't know. Uh, uh, but there is there is this notion that France is really at a crossroads with the Neptunian energy so strong in the chart, in all the charts, the charts of the leader, the charts of the First Republic, the chart, the moon of the Fifth Republic, ruling the ascendant of that chart. Um, it, it's almost like, who do we want to be now? And there is a very strong push-pull. I, I think this is not just about France. Um, for me, these issues are also about all countries in the world where we have very powerful energies running through the unconscious, um, where there's a sort of mass hypnosis going on. Um, that's one of the reasons I put the quote from Goethe in there, that whatever is happening, whatever, we're all looking for an ideal to be run by, but that ideal is, mm, what is the ideal we're choosing right now? And so uh, going back, let's go back to the First Republic chart. I think that's what I want to, I have Marine Le Pen there at the end. But going back to this chart um, with the Jupiter-Neptune, where there is a very, very strong ideal as well as this energy of um, you know, clearly we don't have a Pluto-Uranus opposition. We don't have the same level of, of powerful cycles that are activated simultaneously as we did during the French Revolution. Um, but this uh, Jupiter-Neptune is same work. We want something we can believe in, and we don't want the old thing that has had power over us for so long. Here it's Jupiter opposition Saturn, of course. So this, I think that this chart is looking for solid, is going through a cycle which we know is going to last a while. It's uh, the Neptune transit doesn't end next year when Neptune enters Aries because it will come back into Pisces and, and the eclipses will go over the chart. But what we know is that there is some idea and ideal that um, they are really looking for uh, that they haven't had for a while. So when you say uh, the French for years haven't liked their leaders and the Fifth Republic has the South Node in the Tenth, yes, it's true. I guess they liked de Gaulle, who was the first person, but most people say since Mitterrand, the French really very quickly become disenchanted and disillusioned in their leaders. And it's actually, actually, it's since the Saturn Mitterrand came to power with the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in um, Libra. And um, in fact, we might want to look at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Libra and how that affected um, this chart. Uh, because there's a sort of 
we don't believe anymore. Okay, um, and I would say that's true for many countries in the world. People are not held. That's why there is such a strong movement to go back to nativist parties, because there's this desire to mold people into a collective, into a one, into a unity where all hearts beat at once, or there's a single mind, a single spirit all eyes are focused on the same thing. And that's a real issue in this chart, which is a chart that split the world apart, that literally split the old system, cut the head from its shoulders. Um, and in some ways, um, the outer planets moving into air and fire, uh, the trine and sextile forming, and particularly the Saturn-Neptune conjunction, um, which will be very, very close to the sun of this chart, um, is uh, something that uh, will probably uh, bring a lot to the French conundrum um, of, of lack of belief. Uh, because the Saturn-Neptune, sorry, the Saturn-Neptune conjunction won't be conjunct, it will be opposition, but it will be eventually trying the moon. So I think there may be some consensus of who we want to be, uh, but it's going to take a couple years. And in the meantime, um, there's some hope uh, that the Neptune of the Olympics mm, raises people's spirit in the way the gods want us to be raised, that they fill us with the a, a certain admiration and joy and a sense of something exceptional and out of the ordinary. Uh, because uh, basically this chart needs that right now. It's, um, and to be the, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction trying Mercury can indicate some agreement, but you can see that it's on the IC of, Uranus is gonna to come to the IC of this chart. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's very explosive and it's possible. There are movements, there are, um, some of the disinformation in the world is actually aimed at splitting the unity of the populations of many different countries into different camps. It's aimed at shaking confidence in a central authority. And while Neptune is in Pisces, uh, all of us are subject to that. And um, so this is one of the dangers that you see in this chart with Uranus on the bottom. Um, and I hope uh, that what it means is a spirit of renewal, but given the way it activates the T-square in this chart, uh, it looks like uh, uh, France is in for a little upheaval. And I haven't looked much at the period after the Olympics. Um, Jupiter in Gemini is uh, uh, clearly uh, positive for the Fifth Republic chart. Um, and uh, Lena has said the Olympic chart had the moon applying by trying to turn through their Venus and fire. So a good party alongside the darker possibilities. Yes, I think so too, Lena. All right, wait, I think um, I'm, that's my time, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you, um, you, yeah, I think you finished uh, within seconds of the official clock time. So that's perfect. This is a fascinating, um, presentation. Thank you for taking us through so many layers. Uh, and I think that closing comment that I'm really going to be left with was the one where you spoke about um, perhaps through this, you know, Neptune transit, uh, our excitement and joy will raise to the level that the gods want it to be. You know, there's something specific there about the quality of how it's raised that uh, I thought was uh, very salient. Yes, and it's something, I think there's sort of a choice we have right now to go into <clears throat> division or into some form of where does we really connect. Yeah. And, um, and you can see this in the chart of the First Republic as well. So uh, it isn't, um, 
unique uh, to France, of course, uh, but it's a very powerful need in this chart for, yes. yeah. And so that can change everything. It's like, if you can get to that place, it sort of changes uh, the potential for the rest of the chart. Right, yeah, new perspectives, new orientation, uh, that can really make a big difference. Everybody, please join me in thanking Lynn Bell uh, for her lovely presentation today. Um, we're so grateful to have you, uh, such quality work. Um, right. I'm very excited to say that after this presentation, we'll be welcoming, um, we'll be welcoming somebody to the stage who is representing a new region for us at the World Astrology uh, Summit. That will be Tanya Daniel, Daniel speaking about Germany. So uh, we'll be starting that in about 15 minutes time. I'm going to close this room down so I can save down the recording and open the room up immediately after. You can join us there for a debrief on Lynn's talk if you like. Thank you again, Lynn. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your attention. And uh, go get the recording. <laughs> Stop the share. That would maybe be good. All right. <laughs> Bye.